Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. Uh, I've been excited to do this one. If you clicked on this video, you probably have some records and you may have some of the super rare ones I'm going to be mentioning in this video. Now just a disclaimer, all the records I'm mentioning in this video are common records, but they're extremely rare pressings of these records. So you have to look carefully and make sure you have these records. Uh, not only the albums themselves, but this particular pressing, because as we all know, a lot of these more common records, millions of them were made, and the run-of-mill ones aren't going to be worth thousands, but the rare ones are. So I'm going to show you kind of the differences between them and which ones to keep an eye out for if you're out digging for records. Before I get started, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel already, uh, hit that subscribe button down there. That would help me out a ton. Um, and follow us on Instagram, at Noble Records. I have a record store in Matthews, North Carolina, where we're always buying big collections and showing you really cool stuff that's coming in the shop and recommending records and things like that. So subscribe here and follow us there. Um, just to kind of help the channel keep doing what it's doing. Also wanted to say, generally I do not share uh, vinyl values and numbers with people because it can be a hotbed of debate. People might say, oh, it's not really worth that much or it's worth more than that. So these are general ballpark numbers that I can back up with sources if I need to, but I shouldn't have to, of the, the data I have found online. So my sources are popsite.com, which shares uh, eBay listings for the past 15 years of sold listings of actually sold items, and uh, discogs.com, which is kind of a database. Some of that stuff can be... Uh, accurate for regular stuff but for the really rare records kind of could kind of be all over the place so i don't lean on that one too much but that's kind of where i get my sources and a bunch of different websites i looked on so these are ballpark figures i'm not saying hard and, and fast this is what they normally go for i'm saying that this is kind of just in the air what i've seen so don't hold me to it enjoy the video first is a great record um and that is Rush's debut record, 1974. Uh, this record came out uh, in Canada, actually, a private press um, on Moon Records. So it, you, you might know Rush is signed to Mercury. Uh, and so their first U.S. pressings are the ones that most of us know are on that Mercury uh, label. But the early pressings of it, the band initially put out 3,500 copies of their album first in Canada before they got signed to a major label. This is on Moon Records. This was their label that they specifically made for this record to kind of get some airplay. There's a documentary on Netflix about Rush and they talk about how, you know, some radio DJs got a hold of that Moon Records pressing and they listened to it and they were like, holy moly, somebody's got to sign these guys and they got signed by Mercury and they went on to be the rush that we know and love. But if you have this particular one on Moon Records, the original Canadian pressing on Moon Records, uh, you're looking at somewhere around $1,500 to $2,000 if it's a nice clean copy. Uh, that's what they typically go for. Since it, there's 3,500 copies, it's not super, super rare. You, you know, it is very tough to find. And when values are determined, you know, it goes the de supply and demand. So, you know, if it's a really rare artist nobody's ever heard of, uh, and there's a thousand records, that's not even rare. Uh, but if it's somebody like Rush, you know big mega rush and there's 3500 copies you got a lot more rush fans looking for those so people are willing to pay more so fifteen hundred two thousand dollars that's nothing to shake your head at that's a good payday if you got one of those so keep your eyes peeled for a moon records copy of rush second one now this is a mega one this is this is one that is legendary that all the record stores look for all the vinyl diggers that know about it look for it and that is david bowie's diamond dogs now, there's only ever been a few copies of this known to exist, but if you can find one, they're very, very rare. So this is the Diamond Dogs copy that has not been airbrushed. So how it goes is the original artwork was painted up as, you know, David Bowie's laying there and the back half of his body is a dog. Now, if you flip it over on the other side of the record, you have the dog's lower half. Now we're all adults here. Dogs have a lower half 
that contain lower half parts a downstairs mix up if you may and there were it was a little more detailed than RCA thought would be appropriate so they airbrushed it down there so it looks more friendly so the the the, the album that we all have has an airbrushed downstairs mix up and the but the original artwork was supposed to just look like a regular dog which contains parts so i'm showing you here's a picture of the cover and it's hard to even find a picture but i found one here's a picture of the original artwork cover regular looking dog normal stuff nothing to get all upset about and then here is the airbrush cover that we all know and love so it's very you, you can tell you know it's not like it's a vulgar thing it's just different you know so the uh the band cover is they go around five grand uh one just sold in april of this year for six grand um but i've heard of them going as high as 10 uh 10 grand privately probably the most iconic rare record is the beatles butcher cover now we've all heard about this you probably heard about it uh but i'll go i'll go through it anyways so it's the beatles yesterday and today common record we see it here in the u.s all the time this is the only u.s pressing of this particular um edition but uh the day it was issued it was issued with this super controversial cover um you know you see all the beatles sitting there and there's all this raw meat on their laps along with uh baby doll parts so immediately people were offended and immediately they yanked it off the shelves um, you know, it was only out for probably a few hours, maybe the first day, but they pulled them off the shelves and they went back and they pasted over that cover with the Yesterday and Today cover that we know now for the ones they had on hand. But they immediately started reprinting those covers with the, you, know, you call it the trunk cover, you know, with the Yesterday and Today and Paul's in the trunk. So, there's two versions of this you can look for. There is the first day first it's the the first state butcher is what they call it these are the big money high dollar ones okay these are the ones that never had the paste over on it the near mint perfect nice ones with no adulterations so these can go for big money now there's the second state the one that is is one that has had the paste over but you've not peeled it so here's the thing, a lot of people think if I get one that it's got the paste over, I need to peel it so I can get the one underneath it. Don't do that. The ones that are actually unpeeled are worth more. So, they're worth more than the ones that have been peeled. So just if you find one, don't peel it. That one, the Beatles yesterday, today, you know, they go for five to $6,000. They're in good conditions, the first state the untouched ones the ones that have never had a paste over on it so those go five to six thousand dollars normally now i've heard absurd tales of sealed ones going for 30 grand you know that may be true i don't know I, i've seen um there's there's one listing on on ebay that i know sold for 30 grand there's another one that sold for like 21 grand and those were like near mint or sealed both of them and that's bananas that's not what you're going to get for one if you have one more conservative estimate is five to six grand and that's if it's type top copy top condition that's what they've been known to go for um the ones that are peeled and the ones that are like the ones that are the, the paste over and the peeled those can go for 500 to a thousand dollars maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less depending on the condition uh but if you have one and you're like i don't know if it's this, the paste over or not Here's a picture that can show you kind of where the graphic should be. Um, and so you can see this is not what it looks like, but this is kind of like a, a dub, like a 50% opacity on the paste over. So you can kind of see where it lines up with the original. Now here's a graphic of it where you can see, you see Ringo's V neck. That's, that is the, the telltale sign that you've got one. Now this picture, has not been enhanced in any way. This is exactly what it looks like. So when you get one, it's unmistakable. It, you, it looks like Ringo is a ghost. 
So if you have one, look for that V-neck. If you don't see it, there's no question about it. If you think, I don't know if that's really that, then you don't have one. If you see it, you know it when you see it. Ringo's V-neck, he looks like a ghost, I would say, on the cover. It's very identifiable. Once you've seen one, you know. So those aren't that rare, and you can, they're, they're worth some decent money. I've found a few of those in the past. So those you can find, and like I said, if you don't peel them and they're in good condition, 500 to 1,000, maybe more, depending on how nice they are and depending on how bad somebody wants one. So that's one to be looking for that pretty much everybody already knows about. Uh, next one, moving right along, this is another one that a lot of collectors know about. This is the Bruce Springsteen Born to Run pre-release advanced promo with the script text. This is to a Bruce Springsteen collector, the holy mega grail of all uh, finds to find this. So this was uh, an advanced copy only given to select DJs to get some hype around the Born to Run album the summer before it was released. So these were very, very scarce, only given to a select few DJs. I'm not sure the amount that was actually issued, but it's very low, very limited. Um, and so really nice copies of this, you know, I've seen go for in the neighborhood of five grand. And I'm saying this is really nice copies of it, near mint condition, in the in the neighborhood of five grand. Um, ones that are in poor condition, I've seen go for a thousand. But, uh, you know, the telltale is obviously the script. It's got a different script on the cover. And then also the label has a white label advanced promo label on it. So that's how you know the difference between that one. That one is one, like I said, for the Springsteen collectors, it's a must have, but most people don't have it. Um, next one, this is one I just recently learned out. Shout out to my friend Jerry. He told me about it the other day and I was like, that's crazy because I'm a Grateful Dead dead head fanatic. I have tons of Grateful Dead records. I didn't even know about this. But that is the Grateful Dead Wake of the Flood. Now this isn't it. <clears throat> this is a rare copy. This is a... Um, it says compliments of Grateful Dead. This is a promo, but this isn't the rare one. Uh, the rarest version of this, and one of the most rare Grateful Dead albums there are, is a Grateful Dead record. The, it's, it's Wake of the Flood, but the vinyl is green. It's a dark green vinyl. Here's a picture of it right here. Uh, so the dark green vinyl was an extremely limited fan club only release. However, it was not released. It was... Uh, when it was being stored right before it was being released somehow ironically it was flooded and um, they all got water damaged so some of the copies have surfaced some have been in horrible condition because of the water damage and some of them haven't been that bad so if you get one that's like not that bad you're looking about a five grand five grand five thousand dollar record that's big money uh, the ones that are cheaper, obviously, the condition of the record is all the difference with these. But having that green vinyl is the key. Next one is Led Zeppelin 1 with the turquoise lettering. Now, you guys, if you know me, you know I had this record. At one time, I had a copy. Here's a picture of me with it. So, to prove that I had it. Um, but when I opened my record store a couple years ago, I desperately needed money to get it going, so I sold it. But the story behind it is Led Zeppelin, when they first released this in the UK, this is the very first UK press, uh, it was released with this blue text. And the minute Led Zeppelin saw it, they flipped out. They said, I don't like that color blue. I want it to be something different. So they wanted it to look a little bit more fierce. And so they went for the orange Led Zeppelin font that we all know of. But those, there's maybe a thousand or maybe... Somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 copies got out of this turquoise lettered Zeppelin 1. And it's the holy grail of Zeppelin collectors <clears throat> studio wise. Uh, but it is the mega one to get. And I used to have it. And I don't regret selling it because I have a, a record store now that I needed. And I will find another one someday. But they go for anywhere between 1000 and $3,000, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on condition. It's kind of all over the place, but that's a big money Led Zeppelin for you. Next one's a record that I'm sure most of you probably have. This is uh, The Police Synchronicity. There are a bunch of rare versions of this. Now, I've heard that the you know original cover, there are 36 different variations of this cover. 
uh, and that is just like the run-of-the-mill ones now there are a bunch of really rare ones and one-offs and test pressings and promos that have different covers but like you go into a record store you're gonna find one of 36 covers because they're all just a little bit different um, the rarest of the rare that is most common I guess you would say is the silver gold and bronze so we all know we all have seen the red and blue covers but the silver gold and bronze um, covers with the photos in the background those go for around $150-$200 if they're in good shape there is a rarer version of this that has no photos in the background now allegedly only 10 of these were ever made and so they have gone at auction for $1,500 to $2,000 and the, I even found a listing for one that was a splatter vinyl that there's only one ever been um, known to exist. And that one, it went for four grand. So that's a splatter vinyl copy. Now, if you have this copy, a lot of the first pressings, if you hold them up to the light, are dark purple, which is really cool. But um, most of them aren't these. So you want to look for color vinyl. There are some color vinyl copies that are worth a lot of money. Um, and some people try to collect, they want one of each variant. So it's kind of crazy. It gets nuts. But those are the ones that are worth the most money. Uh, the next one is Nirvana Bleach. Now, this is a reissue. This is not an original first press. I hope to get an original press, first press someday. But there are some really rare pressings of this record when they originally came out in 1989. Uh, the first pressing on white vinyl is the White Whale, the, the one that everybody wants. Um, those can go for up to five thousand dollars very rare record obviously Nirvana back then they were a nobody band nobody knew about them they weren't big deal and so that's an extremely rare pressing uh, worth about five grand if you can get your hands on one of those uh, second comes the iceberg so it's like a almost like a coke bottle blue but a little bit more blue um, is the iceberg color vinyl those go for about three grand um, and then you've got just a regular black version uh, that goes for anywhere from $500 to $1,000, um, and, and that can vary. All these numbers are ballpark figures, but uh, that can vary. Uh, so that is a highly collectible record, really sweet stuff if you ever have a copy. Now, there are some represses on white vinyl. You'll know it if it's a repress, but the original 89 pressing on the white vinyl is the big money $5,000 record. Next one on the list, this is one I've always looked for and I've never seen, and that is the Free Will and Bob Dylan. This is a regular pressing, nothing special about this, uh, but it's a regular, uh, you know, original press of it. Um, but when it was originally the first striking of this record, had four extra songs on it. Now, how you can tell the difference is the track listing down here by Bob Dylan's feet. This one has, is a normal one, so it has all the ones on it that are supposed to be on it. But if you find one of the first first pressing, they had four songs on there. Nobody knows why they yanked it and they took them off. But they yanked it and they took those off and they added some more. So some people think, you know, there's a, a theory that um, they had more recently recorded a couple songs that they really thought should have been on the record. The two big ones are Masters of War and Girl from North Country. Those are the two ones that they replaced and they put those on. And those are great cuts and I'm glad they did. Um, but the four that they took off were Rocks and Gravel, Let Me Die in My Footsteps, uh, Gambling Willie's Dead Man's Hand, and uh, Talking John Birch Blues. Now those will be in the track listing down here. So I always just remember in my head, Let Me Die in My Footsteps. I have a bootleg that's called Let Me Die in My Footsteps. So I remember that, and I see if I see Let Me Die in My Footsteps down here, I grab it so fast. But I haven't found one yet. So... Uh, keep me keep me in, in mind when, when you find one because I'd love to have one. But those are big money. Ballpark generally they go for about 10 grand. Seen them go for less. I've seen them go for more. Rumor has it privately one has sold for 35 grand. So keep your eye out for that one. That's a big one. And that one would slip under a lot of people's noses and they not even know they ever had it. Now, when somebody comes up to me and they say, I've got this really valuable record, nine times out of the ten, they're telling me they have an original white album with the serial number. Or they say, I've got an original, I've got a white album on white vinyl. I get that one a lot, that people say, I've got this white album on white vinyl. It's worth so much money, which it's worth, it's worth money. 
it depends on which one it is because there's a bunch of different editions of it but the white album on white vinyl can be worth 75 to 200 dollars depending on which one you have and the condition that it's in i find a dozen of them every year so they're not that rare uh you know not to bust your bubble but they're not the big money everybody says there is but there are some really super rare versions of this record so i thought i would mention the ones that are rare this is a really really i would say super clean original u.s stereo white album it's got all the inserts it's in really clean condition a really clean one can go for around 100 bucks um and i've heard auction it depends on auctions can change everything you know, I've heard them go for astronomical prices, but certain details have to be right on them. So that's the original U.S. press. The U.K.s can go for more. In the U.K., they did stereo and mono. So the, U the U.K. monos can go for quite a bit more. I would love to have U.K. mono one day. But here are the ones that you need to keep an eye out for. So uh, number one rarest one that has ever sold was the serial number that ended in 0001 was the number one serial number so it belonged to a beetle so the top four belong to the four beetles so the only one that's ever surfaced sold for seven hundred ninety thousand dollars so that's pretty crazy uh your copy of the white album unless you own that one is not worth seven hundred ninety thousand dollars uh, number 005, which I think in theory belonged to George Martin, sold for $26,000. So big difference there between number one and number five. Um, and then, you know, what you need to look out for is if your serial number is under 10,000, then you start talking about it being worth a lot of money, you know, and I've seen some of them go that are really low, like maybe even under a hundred. The low serial number, they call them just low numbers. It's kind of, you know, up for debate what's considered low, but I think anything under 10,000 is considered low. Uh, but you gotta look and make sure they're under 10,000 um, and preferably under 1,000, but I've seen the ones under 100 go for a whole lot. So it just depends, it's all relative. That can be a weird game, the numbers game. But there's a rare pressing that you might not even know about. It's They call it the uh, Harrison Compressed Pressing. So um, the story goes in the U.S., George Harrison got a little tip from somebody that the U.S., capital U.S., and they were about to put out this record, and they compressed it, and it sounded like crap. So they got the masters from the U.K., and they, they ran it through this limiter, that um, kind of dulled down all the highs and lows and they just made it like real compressed and George Harrison went in there and listened to it and he's like rubbish and he, he decided he was gonna fix it so he spent all day uh, remastering this thing um, with the masters at Capitol Records until he was happy with it and was ready to release it and he released it and that's the one we have now that is the good one there is one that sounds like crap apparently that is the compressed version uh, and a few actually did somehow slip under the radar and get pressed and get released. The stampers for those were supposed to be destroyed. Somehow they weren't. It was a factory mess up error and they weren't destroyed and a few copies got out. But only a handful have ever gotten out and only a handful have ever been known to exist. And those have gone for at auction around 10 grand. So if you've got one, the most important thing is do your research on it, but they, there are matrix numbers and the matrix numbers will tell you. So you might be thinking, Dylan, these are stupid. I'm never gonna find this stuff. They're so rare, I'm never gonna find this stuff. Well, you are in luck. I've got a few to show you that are very findable, um, that I've actually got them in my hands, um, that are more findable than the rest of the stuff and more common and they're still worth good money. So, uh, the number one I see people looking for that are really desirable right now, they weren't so much a few years ago. A few years ago, nobody hardly knew these existed, and I found out about them. And it was like I was finding them all over the place because nobody knew about them. Now, everybody's heard the secret, and they're worth a lot of money. This is the Led Zeppelin two, Robert Ludwig edition. So, long story short, Robert Ludwig mixed Led Zeppelin 2. He did a great job. They sound freaking amazing. Um, so, basically the uh, 
one of the executives at Atlantic brought a copy home and gave it to his daughter and she put it on her cheap, crappy kids turntable and the lit mix was so loud her needle jumped all over the place and wouldn't even play it. And so he got on the horn and he's like, pull all these from production and remix this thing. And so they went back in, they pulled it and they turned the, this is actually the same mix, but they turned the volume down on the mix so it wasn't so loud, and they re-released it, which was a major injustice to this record. It was mixed for high voltage rock and roll, and they just dimmed it down, which is just the, the cardinal sin, if you ask me. But, so, how you know if you have the very first, R, it's, it's, they call it the RL, Robert Ludwig, a hot mix is what they call it. But you, but you, the the dead wax. Now I talk about matrix numbers. If you don't know what that is, on a record, there's a space between the last song and the label, and in there you have a secret code of numbers that you might think are irrelevant, but they're not. They'll tell you exactly what copy it is. So in that dead wax, it will say R L S S in it. And you want one that says RLSS on both sides, which this one does. This is a really nice, really clean copy. I found this at a yard sale for $2 several years ago when they weren't going for as much as they are now. But now they go for a really clean copy, can go for up to $1,000. Uh, I would say $500 to $1,000 if they're really clean. They're, it's really hard to find those originals really clean. Uh, but this is a really clean one. And a lot of people, I think most people, will say that the RL mix is better than any other pressing. It's the best pressing. You know, out of the original master recording, the classic records pressings, all the audio file pressings, whatever, this is the best sounding pressing because this is how the album was meant to be heard. It's analog. It's punch you in the face rock and roll, man. It is killer. You got to get the Robert Ludwig pressing of Led Zeppelin II. So always look to see if that RL is there. I always do. Next one is The Doors. This is a common one. Um, you'll notice right here it says mono. It's not worth a ton, but uh, most of them in the US were stereo. So if you find one that's mono, they're worth about 100 bucks. Actually, the mono mix is, wor is worth more, I think, probably because uh, you can hear more of Jim Morrison's vocals. And so in, in the song, The End, he's going and he says some, a bunch of crazy stuff and you can hear more of what he's saying, more detail in his voice, more curse words in the mono mix. I don't know how intentional that was, but that's how they did it. And so it's just a different mix, which makes everything go. But those are worth about a hundred bucks if you can find one. I've seen them go a lot more if they're like super clean, but they have to be super clean. Last one I'm gonna show you is Elvis Moody Blue. Now if it's on this blue color vinyl, guess what? It's worth about six bucks. Yeah, this is another one that, uh, I get people say all the time, oh God, I've got Elvis uh, Moody Blue on blue vinyl. I get that call in the shop all the time, nonstop. Uh, I found about one of these a week. They, they grow on trees. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these were made. And every time someone says, well, I've got a blue, my blue vinyl, I'm like, dear Lord. Um, so they're worth about six bucks. Uh, but always check because if they're on any other color but this blue, they're actually worth money. Um, I have found black ones before. Uh, I've found several on black vinyl, and those go for about 100 bucks on black vinyl. But there's white vinyl, there's red vinyl, there's yellow vinyl, there's green vinyl, and there's various other splatter pressings as well. Uh, if you get any of those, they're worth 500 to $1,000. So every time you get one of these, make sure um, that it's just not that color. That's exactly the one you don't want. So, uh, sorry to bust your bubble if you got the blue one and you think that you're going to be able to retire on it. Um, and all this stuff is ballpark figures, so don't sue me. Thank you guys for watching this video so much. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. Watch some more of my videos. Follow me on Instagram. Go on my website buy t-shirts to help support us. Uh, see all the links below. Uh, we appreciate so much. Hope you guys have a good day. We'll see you next time.